Well, like typical, we'll start with kind of recapping what we saw after watching the tape Stanford-wise. Um, you know, it comes down to what I felt after the game, some of these execution of a player, a player two, really in all three phases. You look at, obviously, special teams who had some opportunities to make that look better and it wasn't good enough. Missing two field goals, a couple of returns. Um, and then, obviously, the, the penalty on trying to block the, block the field goal. And so that, and that needs to get better. Uh, defensively, you know, third down in the first half, there's opportunities to get them off the field. There's a couple third and extra longs there that, you know, they convert. That, um, And it's not always that they went down and scored, but it's also just the time of possession in regards to giving us less opportunities offensively. And then offensively, uh, protection issues in the first half, which we, we need to be able to block that stuff. That's not something that was brand new that we hadn't prepped for. I mean, we got to execute that better. Um, I will say on the other side, there was a lot of good football to see watching this tape. You know, uh, I thought we looked as good offensively for that last quarter and a half than I've seen us moving the ball against a good defense, making some plays. I thought Luton had some unbelievable throws in that second half, especially the one down to Champ on the sideline against the cloud coverage. I mean, some big time plays. AP came up huge for us. O-line blocked that run game really well. Uh, line of scrimmage defensively. Uh, tackles for loss, sackling quarterback. And so, again, you lose a game, you lose it by three. It's not all, uh, all stuff that, that's awful. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of positives there to build off of, and then we've got to continue to clean up the, the uh, things that cost us the game. You know, because I think, uh, obviously, you know, we're getting closer. We lost those guys by 30 last year. You know, we're getting closer, but getting close and then actually winning the game, that's another thing at hand. And so we're just talking to our guys about tightening these details up, which we, uh, which we need to do. And I'm confident these guys will keep on working, uh, understanding that it's not easy to win. It's really not, which we've got another opportunity to – this weekend. So that's kind of recapping, recapping that. Uh, I will say after the game, did run into a, a bunch of former players. It was awesome having those guys back. Sounded like they had a whole lot better time than I did during the game after, uh, after seeing them, uh, Coach Erickson included. So I thought that part was really, really good. Uh, but we headed to another opportunity here with, uh, with UCLA. Got a, a chance to go play in a big time stadium, one that I grew up uh, really loving being born in Pasadena myself, and, and these guys are uh, another opportunity for us to kind of show that we're continuing to progress and find a way to win the game. With that, questions? Yep, uh, he's kind of kind of rolled up on his ankle. Uh, we'll kind of see where he goes uh, tomorrow. We don't think it's a long-term thing, though. Uh, Jefferson, is yep. Well, you know, he, he's a tough kid. He pushed through. He felt like he was going to be ready. We were going to find out a whole lot of information early in the game once he started carrying it. And I think he only got a couple of them. And after, after I think it was that third one, he just felt like, I don't, I don't got it. And so, uh, which we were obviously okay with, obviously with AP going. So we don't think it's a long-term thing. Kid tried to push to play, got to the game 100%, went with the other guy. Did uh, more re-aggravate Hamstring, yep, yep. We think he should be UCLA if he continues to progress. He was pretty close, actually, on Saturday, the, kid, the way the kid continues to work. Um, but he just wasn't, wasn't total. And I saw Sutton Pongo on Saturday, and I just wanted to see, you know, what he do? He's progressing, yep. Uh, I wouldn't call him out right now for this weekend, but he'd really have to progress through this week to play. Yeah, what does that mean? yeah, you know. Well, to me, I think it uh, obviously got to get it close to be able to win. And then when you get it close, like we did, um, continue to do your responsibility when there's pressure moments. I think uh, preparing so when that stage comes, you're ready to just react and not overthink the, the situation that the game's on the line type thing. And I think that's exactly how it played out for us. So, I mean, we tie the game. It goes a minute 50. We kick off, and we've been pretty solid on kickoff. we got two guys doing something blatantly not their responsibility just because of that moment, and we get the long return. And then the first play from scrimmage, Stanford, again, executes it really well, but we run a, a route that we should have coverage. we got leverage on it. We don't do our responsibilities to gain 18. And so that's how you learn to win is just to continue to trust your preparation and do your job in the big moments.
you know, you've talked about progressing and everything, you know, last year to this year, game to game. I know from a fan standpoint, a lot of that becomes how much better you're getting is if you win games. But from a coaching staff, how, how do you guys kind of analyze that? And how good do you feel about the steps that you guys have made up to this point? Obviously, you want to be better, but can, can mm -hmm. you see that? Can you, can you relate that to the players and have them see that? Right. I think it's important to always be looking at uh, progression and improvement. And, yeah, the ultimate one, we want to be winning games. We're not going to shy away from that. Um, there is at, you know, drastic improvement on, just on the defensive side. I mean, let's face it, you look at last year compared to what we're putting through four games, there's improvement there at really every position in the line of scrimmage. And so there's some positives and with momentum with that. I think offensively, I think the thing looks dramatically different after, you know, 16 games here. I think it totally looks different. But has that turned into the win-loss? We want no, but that doesn't mean we're going to you know, shy away from continuing to work and, and get us over that hump. So as a coaching staff, I appreciate our staff. I think we're working really hard. I appreciate our kids. I think they're bought in. They're continuing to play with some energy and improving, and we're confident that we stick to this approach. We'll get on the other side of the scoreboard. You know, AP has done so much. I know he was the starter going into last year, gets hurt. Jamar comes in. You know, he seems like he's just played a different role and has really embraced that. How how do you show what he's done and, and how important has that been? You know, obviously Jamar gets started, but he comes in ready to go. And every time he's out there, he seems to just do his job. Yeah, totally. I think it shows some of his leadership. He's, uh, he's an unselfish kid. He's not worried about being the man or the starter or the number of carries. When he's called upon, he's been ready to go. I think it says a lot about the kid because, again, you're talking about a senior who was replaced by an underclassman. Um, he didn't ever complain about it, turn into any kind of issue. He just kept on working, and he's taken, a, you know, a ton from the opportunities he's been given. Um, is Jordan still your kicker? Jordan's still the kicker, yep. I mean, that first one was 50 yards. It's downpour. I thought he put, actually kicked it pretty well. He's just short. And then the block's not on him. That was on the protection. Yeah, yep. Another detail, we've got a guy, th three years he started on that thing, and this one time he doesn't do his technique, and the guy runs through the gap. This looked like the first game where the other team, they, they, had, a better, they had a better day on special teams, so team-wise, I don't know. Yeah. I think they had a better day on special teams. I do like our special teams. I think we've uh, done some really good things. But yeah, there, you look at the numbers, just in general field position, some critical plays, they had a better day. A couple of, a couple of offensive stats that you guys are just killing it at right now. Turnovers, you've got some good intensity in that. Um, third down conversions, you're in the top five. Now, those are good stats for any team. Those are good stats for any team. Yep. I know. I know. I, it's uh, it's frustrating because I do think we're uh, we're a good offense. I really do. Um, and yeah, we got two losses by three points, and in both those games, we go silent for a half offensively. Um, and so we're trying to get that uh, obviously figured out. Um, and you know, it. Uh, it is what it is. You know, what, what can you do? You got to keep on working. The consistency part, um, some of those drive stalls, or, or we didn't finish with kicks to go through, so it wouldn't be like, oh, we got shut out. At least we got three type thing. But I do know this game's about momentum, and I think this team gets a little momentum. We're a whole lot better. And so we can create momentum offensively. We need to be able to do that in both halves. Uh, Coach, kind of off topic here, but um, California passed a law today you know, that allows – Athletes to opt in for endorsements. So just wanted to get your thoughts on that. You know, I, I did see the, the headline. I know, uh, I don't know all the specifics of the bill implications. I do know this has been a topic going for a while. I heard that the bill might be, I don't know, three, four years down the road type thing. And I think things dramatically change over three or four, four years. Coach, um, UCLA. Tell us a little bit of what, about what they like to do offensively. I know Chip's not doing the, the turbo stuff anymore. Yeah, I think they're, uh, they're dangerous offensively. I think that quarterback creates a lot of issues with his athleticism. I, I do know this because I do study. I've been studying Chip's offense for a long time, so I've been watching these guys. I mean, we, we continue to steal a scheme or two from them. Um, so they present some challenges. Um, 
with the quarterback's athleticism, they'll play with four tight ends on the field, and then they'll get into some open side uh, sets with some skilled players. They got some guys that can really go. Um, so it'll it'll be a challenge. I, you know, some of it. I think they're working with some uh, younger, inexperienced guys, similar to uh, some uh, other teams. And um, I know that uh, they've got the potential to score sixty some odd points. But in, in the in the back in the in 08, 09, when he kind of debuted that, and and Oregon ran what they ran, and other teams put started to implement it. It seems as though it's disappeared. Has it? And why do you think that is? Is it because defense is caught up, or is it because too many quarterbacks were getting injured? No, I he was definitely on cutting edge in, in those years in regards to the pace of play. And then I think this game's always evolving. And so, yeah, you know, de defenses catch up, and then all of a sudden, you know, other style of play works. Um, I, I know this. This guy knows some offense, and he's been effective doing it for a long, long time. Right, you know, it, which is tough because that guy is a, he's a special player. I don't think we'll totally know until kickoff, and that's how we're going to kind of approach it. And so we're planning for a style of play with him, and then we'll study as much as we can with the backup. We got, I know he got a little bit of limited time against Arizona, and, and that's how we're going to have to go about it. This is the first time you've taken the team down to L.A., and it's always a trip, and there's always an upper expectation of going back home. Right. What's, what's that? What's that? I mean, you've done it with Washington, obviously. What, what's mm -hmm. that trip? Yeah, we don't totally treat it different. Uh, we do set some time at the hotel on Friday so people can get with their families, which I think uh, I think is important. You're going to go down that far to to be, you know allow some time for those guys to catch up with one another. I do think we'll play with a bunch of emotion and energy because guys are excited to play down there. All right, you won't like you won't like this one, but the coin. We'll pass it. You guys, you, you guys scored touchdowns in the first three first three games, the first drive out. Yeah. Well, we're playing some better defense, too. And uh, a little bit, this was going to be a possession game, we felt, going against Stanford, because possessions were going to be less. And I'd like to have the added possession in the second half. Yeah, yeah. Coach, on the Artavis Pierce touchdown run, the long one, 43 yards. That he actually oh, scored? Not the one that, like, yeah. he's down at that foot? Yeah. No, the one that he scored on. Yeah. yeah. Although he scored on the other two, I think. But... The 43-yard touchdown, how well was that blocked and executed? I mean, it just looked like a thing of beauty as it played. Yep, O-line blocked it really well. And uh, it was really well designed by that offensive staff because we had done a couple of same actions and we'd handed the reverse. And then we faked the reverse off that same action and completed a ball to Hodge. And the third piece of that was now actually just give it to AP and fake the around, which we caught some eyes on. It was really well executed. And, and AP's got some speed to be able to finish it. I can't remember that. Uh, of course, I can't remember a lot, or I try not to remember a lot of what guys talked about when I was playing. Um, so I can't, no, no, I can't remember that. You don't, you don't recall anything like that? I don't, yeah. So what, do you, what do you think 10 years from now? What do you, what do you think college football is going to be like 10 years from now? Right. Things are going to look different. Yeah, it, they are. Um, obviously, I, I don't exactly know. I do know that we're always looking into the student athlete experience and making that as good as possible and providing for them. And I think we've made some huge strides in the cost of attendance and what we can give them nutrition-wise. And so uh, I think we're always uh, looking at ways to improve, improve their experience with keeping the purity of college athletics, you know. Coach, when on defense in the second half in particular, what, what, did, what happened? Mills was 13 of 15 in the first half. You made him. It just seemed like the second half was a completely different story. And up front, in particular, it looked like your guys were very disruptive. Yeah, we were around the quarterback. I think that that, that helped. I mean, they're good at the screen game. And you look at some of these completions he had on screen, whether it was slow screen to the back or bubble screen out early. Um, we shored some of that up, uh, I know. And, um, you know, I, think, I don't think we changed our scheme at all. We were calling the same stuff. So we were just doing it a little better. Coach, Jake has – is your guy has been giving you some good some good numbers, but there seems to be a pattern of it just being one half 
you feel he's got a he's got a game, a full game in there, and when he finally puts it together, you, you guys can be pretty good. Yeah, yeah, and it's not just Jake. I mean, it's an offensive thing. I mean, we, Jake on the end of the half, he he can't do much on a couple of those. I mean, we we got to block. We didn't. We, you know, Jake was like, hey, did they blitz? I was like, no, they blitzed the three technique. We didn't block the guys running right through the B gap. I mean, it's, it's tough. So all of us offensively need to be able to play for four quarters. Okay. Oh. Um, coach, um, creating turnovers this year has been a problem for the team. Um, how do you start to create more turnovers? and uh, how can you take advantage of a more turnover-prone UCLA team? I think that's a huge step we can take. I agree with you of creating some more. Um, and so that's some of it starts with, you know, being a physical tacklers because, again, they're not just going to give you the ball. Good offenses won't do that. Um, turnovers do happen when you get around the quarterback. we got to continue to do that. And then I think making some plays on the ball in the secondary, having our eyes in the right spots because we're going to get some opportunities. Um, but that's another step we can take is to, to change the game with some turnovers.